another customer. Driver's license, mate. You're an absolute menace. Oh, really? Like a beast of honey. This is what you call a police state. Uh, the, the cops claim they're finishing. Gladys has resigned. We're celebrating. Democracy manifest. Maybe they're delivering the evidence. Very embarrassing. Hey, what happened to the drug test? Tell me, you didn't answer the question. Stand up. We should measure. Come here, please. Today, sweetheart. Don't vote for Liberal, Labor or Green. What's the question exactly? As you can see behind me, we have another customer. You're wasting police resources. Ah, ah, ah. There's evidence. Good, you walk, Jay. Why would a police hide, you know? Look at him. Look, look, look how he's hiding. He thinks he's where's Wally. Look at him. You just ripped it out on camera. Skiing. Skiing, mostly. <laughs> let's talk, buddy. Yeah, let's get one. Are you the same one as yesterday? <laughs> hey guys, we got AFP on the scene. I am going, why can't we Boris, to a direction. You can't listen to this stuff without having a beer. An area which is lawful to attend an essential reason. So you're foraging. You're foraging for the fruit of the land. That doesn't make any sense. Why didn't you check this one? You always look stressed when you see me, man. And these poor kids just came out of Academy in Goulburn. We are not marching to Parliament. We are marching on Parliament. Don't be shy. Channel 7 or Channel 9? Well, here you go. How about that? Enjoying the diesel engine of the Land Cruiser? You know what? The Electric Commission would just love that. Can you not interrupt the search, mate? Every time the cops try and do this, they lose. Look after the women and children. What has he found? <laughs> I'm under arrest. I already told you. I was followed by high patrol the whole way there and back. <laughs> I'm, I'm flying the Aussie card, the freedom of speech card. Welcome to fascist country Australia. He's another one joining the party. We're all being oppressed, we're all being intimidated. Oh I've just, I've just got to give you one of these. Well, you're serving this, you may as well read it. Do I get a schmacko for today for being a good citizen? Watch them run away in shame. Which Thanks. channel are you from? Enjoy your day, mate. Boom! Thank you very much. <laughs>
uh, those who uh, uh, want me to be locked up or something like that, well, bad luck. I'm happy where I am. You know, that's the funny thing. I'm happy in the Russian consulate. And I'd be even more happy if the Australian government would deport me straight to Russia as some as part of some deal, maybe a prisoner exchange deal. I know there are a few prisoners, a few Western prisoners in Russia, which the Australian government and other Western governments would love to see freed. Well, let's have that conversation uh, during tonight's show. I'll talk to, uh, to Sarah about that and what she thinks, because Evan Gershkovich, uh, who is celebrating his one-year anniversary of being locked up in Russia, the Wall Street Journal reporter, he's making headlines all around the world. People are saying, free Evan, hashtag bring Evan home. Well, guess what? One of the solutions could be to bring Evan home would be to offer a prisoner swap. Now, how badly do they want Evan? Do they want Evan that badly that they're willing to uh, give uh, the Aussie Cossack free passage? to Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport and allow me to go to Russia. Well, that would be uh, an interesting uh, revelation if that was able to occur. Uh, would Penny Wong go for that? Penny Wong, what do you guys think of Penny Wong? Uh, nightly fireworks, that's uh, 9 p.m. Yeah, every Saturday night in Sydney, we do have fireworks. And of course, we can talk about Assange. Um, they're not going to give Assange up. They're not going to let Assange go. They, they're too afraid of him. Could you imagine if Assange was released as part of a prisoner exchange and Assange was given to the Russians? Mate, imagine the Russians and Assange combined with his WikiLeaks power and knowledge and that uh, intel that he has on the West. It'd be a disaster. So they're never going to give him over, are they? I just wish, again, I've said this many times, I wish instead of going to the Ecuadorians, Assange went to the Russians. The Russians, one thing about the Russians, they do not give up uh, their own. Paul says, I'm not a prisoner. Well, you have to ask Mr. Igor Arzaev, the uh, general consul, if he thinks I'm a prisoner or not. I'm not a prisoner, am I? Am I a prisoner? I'm very restricted in one sense, but from the other uh, perspective, I've got free reign to freedom of speech and broadcasting, which is the most important uh, uh, thing for me. Uh, really? Penny uh, Penny Wong getting a few comments there in the comment sections. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll definitely uh, read out your questions. Let's, let's, let's make a rule tonight. Ask away whatever questions you like or whatever observations and comments you have. We will uh, read them out tonight on the air. Plenty of people tuning in from X, Aussie Kozak on Twitter. If you're not on there, get on there. And another two of our uh, co-hosts tonight, Searing Girl and Sarah, who have uh, monster Twitter accounts at Searing Girl and DD Geopolitics, will be uh, joining us uh, very shortly. But before we cross over to uh, our friends, uh, Searing Girl and... Sarah, there's one thing uh, we need to do, and that is go to a very quick ad. Head over to www.aussiecosac.shop. Check out the range of hoodies, Z gear, Russian merchandise, Russian caps. Wear this, start a conversation, make a statement, show your outward support to Russia. Don't be shy, wear it proudly. There's even something for the women from Mrs. Kozak. Check out her range. And most importantly, you can even order Russian military uniforms, tactical camouflage anywhere in the West, delivered worldwide. There you go. If you want to get some uh, very, very uh, controversial conversation starting merch, just head on to aussiecosac.shop and it'll be shipped to you wherever you are in the world, including uh, flags, including the Z badge, which I'm not wearing tonight. Well, not for any particular reason, uh, just that I wore a different blazer and T-shirts and so forth. So tonight's show, one of the stars of tonight's show who's not with us, his name is Adrian McRae, because he has got an exclusive deal with Current Affair on Monday night doing an interview with them. So he's not giving any comments until Monday night. And today is, of course, Saturday in Australia. Uh, but I'm going to ask uh, Sarah to join us. Sarah is in the United States. Sarah, welcome to the Aussie Kozak show, Sarah. Oh, how hi. How are you? Sarah, have you heard about this uh, bizarre story? That's what the media are calling it. Have you heard about it in the U.S.? Um, just that somebody said congratulations to Vladimir Putin, and now Australia is engulfed in flames because of that. Is that what was that about? What's happening? Well, Syrian girls across it as well. She'll, she'll be joining us in a second. But before she joins us uh, from Western Australia, where she just returned from Moscow, in fact, uh, have a look at the outrageous reports uh, that are being spun. So this is what Channel 7... A newly elected WA councillor has heaped praise on Vladimir Putin during a trip funded by the Russian embassy. The town of Port Hedland has described it as a personal activity and won't say if Adrian McRae has breached its code of conduct, but his appearance on Russian TV has left MPs furious. 
from Port Hedland with love in Russia. Uh, can I please pass on my... Councillor-elect Adrian McRae's appearance on Russian TV earned a swift rebuke from his home state. Ultimately, he'll be held accountable by the people of Port Hedland. It's completely unacceptable behaviour. It's bizarre commentary. It's quite inaccurate commentary. But the damage may have been done. The man who proudly called himself a domestic terrorist at freedom rallies in Perth... Standing here in defiance of tyranny. We're sort of losing our, losing our rights as Australians. Wouldn't answer his phone today after being awarded a badge of honour in Russia and heaping praise on what he called the transparent and comprehensive victory of Vladimir Putin, who has threatened to jail seven news journalists who dodged Russian bombs to report the war in Ukraine. Whether by intent or not, he played... Uh, right into what the Kremlin wanted to hear. Foreign Minister Penny Wong has described Putin's victory as an insult to democracy, while the Department of Foreign Affairs today said it remains deeply concerned by the deliberate exclusion of independent and impartial observers, making it clear that Adrian McRae was neither. And he's hardly representative of Australia's democracy. He won his seat on council with only 643 votes, giving him a say, but diplomats hope not much sway in world affairs. Jessica Page, 7 News. Well, there you go. That's Channel 7 in Australia. He did win by 643 votes. However, that's uh, more votes than what Premier, uh, Western Australian Premier Roger Cook got because Roger Cook was not elected he was elected how many votes did navalny get he got one voted <laughs> off the island that's what he got <laughs> voted to the gulag and uh, um and voted by pfizer as their best customer having five shots which is what uh, led to him ending up in his current predicament without talking too much uh, due to the fact that we're broadcasting on youtube and there's still censorship which is outrageous but this report is just one of many reports sarah that has been uh, dominating headlines in Australia. So the story uh, is a storm in a teacup, but it's 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 outrageous that they would react like this. A bloke from Australia, from Western Australia, who really doesn't have any ties to Russia, decided uh, to go on another adventure. This is a man who loves to go on adventures. This is a man who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I think he's probably the first bloke in history to climb <laughs> Mount Kilimanjaro. This is a man who hang glides off of mountains and buildings and... Uh, and swims with great white sharks in in the in the beaches of Port Hedland, and scuba dives with stingrays, and and pulls bulldozers out of canyons, like crazy stuff like that, right? Is it, and this is what this is who Adrian McRae is. And when he was offered to be an observer at the Russian election, he couldn't resist. He said, Far, "Of course, of course, I'll go and have a look." And this is what they're attacking him for, the mainstream media, because this man from Australia went to view the election. Now, you saw that report. They said that uh, Adrian McRae uh, is, uh, you know, the, the insinuated to be some type of bad guy who's done something bad. He's actually done nothing wrong. In all the media reports, they haven't actually accused him of doing anything bad. They've just said that he went to Russia. Now, what's wrong with going to Russia? That was Channel 9. Have a look at what Channel... Uh, that was Channel 7. Have a look at what Channel 9 did. Russian state television congratulating President Vladimir Putin on his recent election win. Our Premier condemning Adrian McRae's travel to the country, labelling his behaviour bizarre and unacceptable. It was an unexpected appearance on Russian state television. Uh, can I please pass on my... Newly appointed Port Hedland councillor Adrian McRae congratulating President Vladimir Putin on his re-election, hailing the process as the most transparent in the world, an opposing view to Western nations. It's completely unacceptable behaviour. It's bizarre commentary. It's quite inaccurate commentary. Mr McRae was reportedly invited to Moscow as part of an international delegation, seen here with the opposition candidate receiving a badge of honour for strengthening the friendship between Australia and Russia. The town of Port Hedland stating the trip wasn't on its watch, that the new councillor travelled to Russia in a personal capacity and that the town does not comment on the personal activities of elected members. What I expect is the, the town of Port Hedland 
to uh, counsel that, that uh, councillor in terms of his conduct and his commentary. Mr McRae previously spruiked himself as a philanthropist, appearing on 60 Minutes, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and sharing the clip to his council election Facebook page. I believe in something strong enough to, to make it work. He was voted into council this month, yet to be sworn in, but after this appearance, supporters might have a few questions about their elected member. Quite frankly, I think we're all a bit embarrassed. Tracy Vo, Nine News. Well, I can say definitely I'm not embarrassed. I'm proud of this man. And look at all the uh, thousands of comments in the comments section flooding in. Guys, let us know what you think of Adrian McRae. Sarah, you're in the US. What does it look like to you? Um, at least Russia had an election. Zelensky still won't have an election. Um, and uh, we, I, we, we sent our own international observers too from the United States. What's the point of sending our own international observers if you just call them liars when they come home? Uh, the whole thing's kind of a joke. Just more erosophobia, more nonsensical uh, act, action from the West, really. Well, I think that it's clear that they feel threatened. The, the mainstream media, the establishment, uh, the political elite in Australia feel threatened by the fact that Mr. McRae went on this trip to see with his own eyes what actually is going on in Russia and at the election. Now, you know, I've spoken with Adrian and he's, he told me himself personally, he observed, he watched people vote for Putin. He said eight or nine out of every 10 ballots was going to Vladimir Putin. And this is what the West is afraid of. This is what they can't admit. This is what uh, is making uh, it so difficult for them to... Uh, face the truth of the fact that Vladimir Putin genuinely has the support which the election results demonstrated, and that was 87% of the vote. And, of course, the Australian media... See, the Australian media should have gone with Adrian McRae. They should have gone there. Would have loved to have seen a Channel 7 camera crew asking people in Russia what they think of Vladimir Putin. Uh, why can't people accept in the West... Well, sorry, why can't the elites accept in the West, that Putin really does have the support of the Russian people. And not only the Russian people, he's very popular outside of Russia, getting 78% in the voting booths overseas. And in Australia, Vladimir Putin got 53% of the total votes cast in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, uh, and Canberra, so and Perth. So there's, it's quite clear that it was a, a very strong victory and no one can doubt that. And that's why it's good that we had at least one observer from Australia uh, attending the elections. And look how they've just piled on onto him. It's, there's, no, there's no coincidence that this has uh, happened that way. Uh, it's obviously a very coordinated attack uh, on Adrian. They had even uh, Australian Army uh, Major General uh, Mick Ryan, who is a well-known anti-Russian uh, mouthpiece, uh, have a look at what he said about it. Now, Russian propaganda, uh, There's some of that strikes home here in Australia, Mick. How are we to interpret an obscure local councillor, uh, as far as we can tell, from Port Headland, congratulating Vladimir Putin on his election victory? This is Adrian McCrae, who stood for election in Australia with the Great Australia Party, and he went as a so-called independent monitor. Uh, is he a prime example of a propaganda tool at this stage? Unfortunately, it appears so. The Russians are very effective at getting misinformation out in a range of different countries around the world. And Australia is, no, is in no way immune to this. We've seen it from other countries. We're seeing it from Russia. They will seek to influence populations where they're susceptible to Russian messages. Unfortunately, it appears this person may have been very susceptible to it, but we should be very clear, as the foreign ministers uh, made clear and many other democracies have made clear, this was not a transparent and fair election in Russia that's just been connect, uh, conducted. Yeah, and I would have thought that for propaganda to be effective, the source needs to be credible. I'm not sure that uh, is fully established in this example that we were just alluding to. Well, there you go. Another crack at uh, good old Adrian McRae. And I think uh, let's talk to the locals in Western Australia. It's my pleasure now as people in the comments section are asking for Syrian Girl. Here she is, Syrian Girl. Welcome to the Aussie Cossack Show. Hi, guys. Nice to be here. Hi. We've got a bit of a Hi. Soviet Hi. reunion happening here. A, a Soviet? <laughs> a Soviet reunion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Syria, 
Russia, America. Oh, mm. because of Syria. Russia and Russia. I guess. Well, you're just, you just got back from Russia, didn't you, Syrian girl? Yes, I did. Um, I was there to cover the election, but I wasn't an election monitor. Um, so I wasn't there at the polling stations and scrutineering. Uh, but yeah, I, I saw I saw what happened and I you know I, I have called Adrian and discussed it with him, which is find the whole thing quite really hilarious uh, for various reasons. Uh, for one thing, you know, if you saw that first clip on channel seven, you, they said that, oh, well, he only won with 700 votes or however much it was. Well, the whole like uh, number of votes in Port Hedland was something like 1,400 or 1,300 and he got the most votes by a long shot out of anyone. So it's like Channel 7 is criticizing their own democracy. It's like they're just criticizing Australian democracy by saying, oh, well, he only won with that many votes. So what is it? Like, does he have to win at 87% like Putin in order to be legitimate in this woman's eyes? Uh, it, it's, it's illogical. The second thing that's funny is they had this so-called expert uh, called uh, Alexei Muraviv. Uh, and this guy is, an, he works for ASPI, uh, the Australian Security, I don't know, some think tank. I forget what it's like. I forget the acronym, what it means. Um, but he is originally Russian. And he actually wrote an article, and I'm re-looking at it now. I'll send it to you. In 2020, that said, uh, and I quote, even as public trust Putin has declined. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry uh, no, this is the wrong part. Okay, Russia's real liberal opposition is a lost cause. The most charismatic and trusted opposition figure in Russia, Alexei Navalny, has launched many anti-corruption investigations into figures in Putin's party, yet his popular yet his popular support base remains pitifully low. The same political trust poll by the independent Levada Center shows Navalny at no more than 3%. So and in this article, and he goes on to say that uh, uh, you, uh, there's a whole new generation of Russian voters who grew up in a country run only by Putin, not all support Putin, but many young people are his biggest fans. So this is the guy that they brought up from his think tank from Curtin University that is trying to discredit what Adrian McRae saw with his own eyes, which was people voting for Putin. But he himself said that Putin was popular and Navalny, the biggest opposition guy, was only going to get 3% of the vote. So again, I think your uh, what you said was quite uh, accurate, that they seem to be afraid. And, you know, Cook said he was embarrassed. I think that uh, he should be embarrassed, uh, first, least of all, by his teeth, but most of all, because uh, he's lying in public. And in a sense, uh, Adrian McRae has exposed their propaganda um, and they're embarrassed by that. And that is what's that's what's really happened. And now they're angry. And so what do they do? They always do the same thing. They try to intimidate people through the media by tarnishing their reputation. And notice they couldn't come up with anything against Adrian. Uh, they One of the things said that he called himself a domestic terrorist, which is a complete lie. At that rally, he actually uh, said that uh, was reacting to the fact that the premier called the protesters domestic terrorists. This was at the time when they were just refusing to be vaccinated. So they were called domestic terrorists for just for that. And he was saying it sarcastically, like, according to him, we're all a bunch of domestic terrorists. So this is the kind of thing that they twist and they turn to try to, um, you know, uh, tarnish someone's reputation. He's a, they say he claimed he's a philanthropist. He was jumping off Mount Kilimanjaro and getting donations to build schools in Africa. That's what he was doing. So, uh, yeah, I don't think he's the kind of guy that's easily intimidated. Well, I think it's good that he's done this, and it's good that he's ruffled the feathers of the establishment. And we can say that uh, the tactic of the establishment that's been deployed against Adrian McRae is backfiring, because if there's one bloke you shouldn't go after, it's probably Adrian. There's nothing that they've got on him to poke a stick at. There's nothing they can say bad about him, because the bloke has spent his whole life working uh, his guts out. He's, he's in the... Uh, construction industry is in the Western Australian uh, mining industry. Uh, he's very well known in town. Uh, the, he got voted in because he's a popular guy, because people like what he does. He's very well known and supported in the freedom movement. The reason being because he's supported the freedom movement from day one. And it's thanks to people like Adrian that people in Western Australia, in New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, actually have any of their freedoms back. A lot of the conferences, a lot of the big events that were being organized for example the events with uh, jfk jr and in the us and all sorts of things 
uh, were done uh, by uh, Adrian McRae Philanthropy Proprietor Limited. Or, uh, I don't altruism. think he's very proud of that now, uh, especially after what RFK has become. But he's definitely done a lot more inside Perth. He brought Malhotra here uh, for that big event go. here, people will know. Malhotra, look, there's a, there's a whole list of, uh, of things and uh, his work in Africa and stuff. So all of that, the, the mainstream media has now brushed aside and they're trying to paint him with this, this guy as a, a pro-Putin bloke. But the thing is, he didn't go to Russia to be pro-Putin. He went there as a official, impartial, independent observer. That is the difference. And the people in the comment section are saying he needs to run as PM. Let me know right now in the comment section if you agree with that. Would you rather see Adrian McRae or Albanese in charge of Australia? We'll bring your comments up on the screen. Um, and the, the public opinion game in this situation has been certainly uh, a lost uh, game set match by the establishment. It was not a very, very uh, smart move by the establishment to go after him. Uh, there are more uh, mainstream media. Uh, hit pieces. Look, uh, this is uh, this is another one from the Channel 9. It was an unexpected appearance on Russian state television. Oh, can I please? Then you've got ABC. Now, Russian propaganda. You've got Russian Channel... state television congratulating President Vladimir Putin on his recent election win. Our Premier... It's, it's, it's obvious that it's a very, very organised and um, planned hit piece <laughs> attempt. Yeah, Again. I mean, it came just after he returned to uh, Australia. It's just like the timing was impeccable. Um, and uh, it's also, the, it, it's all of them all in unison saying the same thing. That's what our democracy is, isn't it? It's the government making a call to the state media and telling them, hey, make a hit piece on this guy. That, that's what our democracy is here. Well, Sarah, you're in the US. What does it look like to you from there? I mean, it looks like more more of the same. It, um, it looks very typical of Western uh, propaganda outlets. But the funny, I don't know if Australia media has caught on yet, but American media is starting to catch on that as soon as they villainize somebody or demonize somebody, they become a kind of a, a hero to the <laughs> to the population. So usually it backfires on them. So maybe with uh, Adrian McRae, the same will happen, and he'll just his kind of stock will go up for sticking it to the government. Well, they didn't calculate uh, this uh, campaign against him. So far, it's backfired. Uh, we did invite Adrian for an interview, but he's uh, pledged exclusive interview rights to Current Affair on Monday night. So tune in in Australia. And look, I don't really like Current Affair, and I don't think anyone does. They're, they're, they're very sort of gutter journalism. It's always the story about the, the dodgy real estate agent or the the hoarder or the dodgy trades the tradesman or this type of, you know, these type of uh, uh, episodes that they do, but everybody watches it. So all the uh, sheeple at home sitting in front of the TV, they watch Current Affair or Today Tonight and uh, 60 Minutes and so forth. Actually, Adrian's also appeared on 60 Minutes previously. So Monday night, tune in. It'll be interesting to see how they uh, try to attack him, a Syrian girl, what angle they use. But what angle can they use? Uh, what is the allegation that he congratulated Vladimir Putin on his victory in the election. That is the best that they've got on him. What's wrong with that? Why is that causing such grief and anguish uh, all the way up to the Premier, uh, Roger Cook? And by the way, the Premier was not elected. Adrian McRae, he's just a councillor, but at least he was elected by the people. Premier <laughs> Cook was not elected. He, he just automatically assumed that role uh, when McGowan left. So how do the people of Western Australia feel? At least... Uh, uh, at least Adrian McRae was elected. And if he was elected by a small majority in his town, that's still better than being selected, wouldn't you say? Definitely. And, you know, the, the funny thing is it's he was actually elected by, it was four different people under the election. Um, and he was elected by a large margin, which is kind of reflective of what happened in Russia. So, but this is like, they're, they're criticizing him because he got elected by 600 votes in a place where only 1,400 people were voting or something along those lines. And he got 45, like 49% where everybody else got like 5% or all of the other candidates. So he won by a long shot. Don't quote me on those statistics. I'm, it's, it's approximately. But this is your democracy. Like this is your system. So if he got elected with that system, then why do you have a problem with that? I mean, it just doesn't make any logical sense. It's like she only she's only going to accept his victory if it was 87 
0.7%. And that's the only time she's going to say, oh, well, he got elected. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, you're absolutely correct. The premier was not elected. Uh, the prime minister it's it, themselves, you know, people are, it's not, it's not a popularity contest. You know, people just either vote for Labour or Liberal. So it, we've had so many prime ministers in this country that, like, were hot shoe shuffled that weren't elected. Uh, Julia Gillard being one, she just basically took the position without anyone saying yes or no. So uh, it just it's very interesting how the standards like twist and turn uh, when it comes to these things. And what Adrian McCray said that pissed them off the most was that he it is the best. It was the most independent um, and above board election he's ever seen in spite of having scrutineered elections in Australia. I that... think the, the most transparent election he's ever seen. Uh, we, yeah. we actually, we can bring the quote up and. Isn't it brilliant how the mainstream media were forced to uh, push the Aussie Cossack news watermark all over the screens? I thought that was hilarious. It was an unexpected appearance on Russian state television. But can I please pass on my... Newly appointed Port Hedland councillor Adrian McRae congratulating President Vladimir Putin on his re-election, hailing the process as the most transparent in the world, an opposing view to Western nations. It's completely unacceptable behaviour. It's bizarre commentary. It's quite inaccurate commentary. Mr McRae was reportedly invited to Moscow as part of an international delegation, seen here with the opposition candidate receiving a badge of honour for strengthening the friendship between Australia and Russia. The town of Port Hedland stating the trip wasn't on its watch, that the new councillor travelled to Russia in a personal capacity and that the town does not comment on the personal activities of elected members. What I expect is the, the town of Port Hedland to uh, counsel that, that uh, councillor in terms of his conduct and his commentary. Mr McRae previously spruiked himself as a philanthropist, appearing on 60 Minutes, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and sharing the clip to his council election Facebook page. I believe in something strong enough to, to make it work. He was voted into council this month, yet to be sworn in, but after this appearance, supporters might have a few questions about their elected member. Quite frankly, I think we're all a bit embarrassed. Tracy Vo, Nine News. Come on, guys. Who's embarrassed? No one's embarrassed. There's no one I've met who's embarrassed. Everyone's proud of it. I think Cook has reason to be embarrassed of himself. Roger Cook. Yeah, well, yeah, Roger Cook can be embarrassed. be embarrassed. First of all, because of his teeth. Second of all, because, <laughs> because uh, I think Adrian has humiliated him and his entire system by observing that all of the lies that we've been told about Russia versus Australia's democracy is a complete sham. And I think they humiliated themselves further by trying to defame him because he had an opinion. That's democracy. So I, I think he has a, plenty of reasons to be embarrassed. But I also thought it was pretty funny to have Channel 7 News fly the Russian flag and congratulate Putin on his election campaign. And also, if you noticed in that Channel 7 clip, they actually tagged your Twitter, uh, sorry, your Telegram channel. Did you notice? Yeah, quite outrageous. Uh, I mean, they would have been falling over themselves. Do we run the footage or not? And in the end, they elected to run the footage and have the Aussie Cossack News logo blasted all over the mainstream media. Uh, I could just imagine in the uh, production team, uh, they didn't want to do it, but they had to do it because where else are they going to get the footage from? Uh, plenty of super chats flying in. Uh, we'll read them all out. Uh, super chats from the other side. Sarah, as always, great job. You're always welcome to come on our live show from Minsk Sundays and Wednesdays. A very clever guy. Puts a super chat and gets a free plug for his show. Sam Ali is uh, sending in the. Uh, see, look, Taraz Bulba gets two dollars. Yes. Taraz Bulba gets two dollars. Steering girl gets fifty dollars. How about that? This is, this is the way. Uh... Did you guys notice the difference? I suppose. <laughs> Sirigo got fifty dollars. I got five dollars, and Taras Bulba got how much did he get? Two dollars. Two dollars. I mean, that's that's uh, pretty disappointing. But all proceeds tonight go to the uh, uh, benevolent fund of fighting back against. Here we go. Syrian girl, fifty bucks from Sam Ali. So there you go. That's, that's, that's the picking <laughs> order in, in tonight's show. Um, but yeah, if you put up a super chat, we'll read it out. If you put up a comment, we'll read it out. We'll try and get to all your comments. Adrian McRae. What's the people's verdict? It's pretty clear uh, that he is a man of the people, a hero of the people. The attempts by the mainstream media to smear him have absolutely backfired. Uh, Channel 7, Channel 9, 
Channel 10, ABC, everyone is throwing everything they've got at him. But the good thing is Adrian is a perfect uh, leader and a, a figurehead for uh, freedom-loving uh, pe people around the world and those people who have no problems with congratulating the Russian president. What a great thing to do. I think Australians are proud of Adrian, that uh, Adrian has stood up to the cabal, stood up to the establishment, and he's got the guts and he's got the balls uh, to conduct uh, diplomacy on a people's diplomacy level. This is where our leaders are failing us, our political elite are failing us, and where Penny Wong and Albanese couldn't even offer condolences and give official condemnation to the terror attacks that occurred in Moscow. It's a bloody disgrace that they uh, refused to condemn the terrorist attack, and thank goodness for people like Adrian McRae. So in other news around the world at the moment, we've got plenty of action on the front line. As uh, you can imagine, the Russians are, are on the move. Uh, the Ukrainians are, aren't very uh, strong and they've got a pretty bad position. Uh, but in domestic news in Russia, um, the Russian government is considering uh, death penalty. Considering the death penalty. I want to have this conversation, guys. What do you think? Should the terrorists be given the death penalty? We all saw the horrific footage. The Russian people actually have a law in Russia. The Russian government has a law about the death penalty, but there has been a moratorium put on it, so it can't be um, fulfilled. Or the sentences can't be fulfilled. But now a Russian lieutenant general, his name is General Gurulyov, he's also a deputy of the state Duma, uh, he has uh, declared that uh, death penalty should be brought in for three types of people. Three crimes. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you can guess before we play that footage which are the three crimes uh, that deserve the death penalty. Uh, let me know very quickly uh, if you think the death penalty is appropriate. What are the three crimes which it should be uh, given for? Is the question because uh, General Gurulyov, who's actually from my region, the Zabaykal region, uh, has some very strong words to say. Yes, uh, Первое для террористов, второе для тех, кто предает свою родину, для предателей, и третье для педофилов. Причем сегодня в Думе разгорелась довольно серьезная дискуссия, как этот процесс должен быть организован. И судя по настрою нашего депутатского корпуса и нашего председателя Государственной Думы Вячеслава Викторовича Володина, я думаю, что этот вопрос будет решен. There you go. The death penalty. What do we think, girls? Uh, do you agree for these th three categories? For terrorists, for pedophiles, and for traitors? Sarah says no. Yeah, I agree that they those three categories should have to, should receive the death penalty, but I don't agree that this group of men should receive the death penalty. Why is that? Because there was no ideological backing uh for these for this act this was about money these are just poor disenfranchised men that were taken advantage of by who knows who i think it's more important to find out the source of it than to punish these guys i don't these these guys aren't militants they're not um extremists they're just poor people literally they're just poor guys well what can i say uh i I think that the only reason we should not give them the death penalty is because that'll be too good for them. Uh, that's my opinion. There's right? that too. I, um, I will tell you my opinion with regards to how I felt in Syria. I think that um, we should have the death penalty for all ISIS in Syria and in Russia and everywhere. So I do believe in the death penalty. However, I do tend to agree because in this particular case, uh, with with Sarah, because in this particular case, it was such a mask off moment for the puppeteers behind ISIS who have been behind it since the Iraq War um, uh, to have their you know there will be at the moment people cowering right now, wondering if any one of these guys is going to sing and if they're going to be exposed. And maybe the longer they are in prison, the longer uh, they will have time to sing. Unfortunately, I think also you know I wouldn't uh, taint any interrogation with them by uh, doing what some things, I mean, I, the anger is justified and I, I would be hypocritical to say that I haven't felt that similar sort of feeling, um, but I, I wouldn't like taint the interrogation and the resultant information by, uh, you know, harassing them in a physical way either. I would, it's just a waiting game. I think eventually 
they're going to sing about who was the one behind them. Well, uh, we want them to uh, tell us who's behind them. I think the world's waiting uh, for that information. Who was behind the attack? There is one legal loophole which I want to report about tonight, and that is that uh, these terrorists who com committed this act committed the act on the territory of the Russian Federation. Now, as the Crocus City Hall massacre was committed by terrorists who were indiscriminately shooting at members of the public, they actually murdered during that process, during the attack, they murdered some citizens of Belarus. Of Belarus. And uh, State Duma Deputy Maria Butina, who is a good friend of ours, uh, she's the lady, if you heard of her, who was uh, brought back from the United States after uh, being charged by the US government with uh, ambiguous charges. Uh, she was uh, swapped in a prisoner deal, I believe, and she became a deputy in Russia. Well, she has confirmed today that there is a legal loophole because Belarusians were killed by the terrorists. The Belarusian government could technically extradite them back to Belarus, if Russia agrees, of course. And in Belarus, they do have the death penalty. So President Lukashenko could, of course, execute them. And it would be a very interesting boss move if they took that legal loophole and took full advantage of that. Uh, Marina, Maria Butina also confirms that the Russian... FSB and the Belarusian KGB, what a gangster country. They still got the KGB, love it. They are now negotiating and uh, coming up with a solution or an arrangement uh, and checking on the viability of this potential scenario. So you can't execute them in Russia, but potentially we can execute them in Belarus. Uh, it's, a, it's a loophole, but it could work. What do you think, Sarah? <laughs> you really want to give them back to Uncle Sasha? I mean, I guess so, but... Um, I don't think that Putin would do that at all. I don't think that that's, that that's even a, remotely a possibility. You think it's uh, too outrageous to, for this little combination? Bring him, bring him to Belarus just to execute them. Myself? Well, hang on, didn't Medvedev say? He did say that he's going to execute them. They will be killed. Well, I think that if it happens, it's going to happen after a while because Russians are very angry. Very angry. So I, I don't see them letting these guys go even to a sister nation like Belarus. For now, at least. Maybe after a while. Well, I mean, the people in Russia are not very happy. And like Sarah, like you said, these guys were just the uh, uh, pawn. They were the people that were used to commit the attack. And they, they did it for money. They didn't do it for an ideological purpose. There has been information in the news that they were recruited via an ISIS group. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the attack was ordered by ISIS. This is the difference, distinction that has to be made. They were, the Russians, uh, the Russian state media, Ria Novosti, confirmed that they were recruited by a telegram group that has links to the Afghan wing of ISIS. Doesn't mean that ISIS ordered the attack. It's, uh, they still maintain, uh, the Russian side maintains, and this has been confirmed by uh, even uh, parliamentarians from the European Union, from the Netherlands, that Ukraine is behind the attack. Uh, officers were raided in Moscow of a cryptocurrency company that was uh, uh, allegedly uh, involved in financing the attack. And of course, if uh, this continues this way, well, what are all the pro-Ukraine supporters going to say when their country officially is a uh, financing and organizing terrorist acts? It's not a good look uh, for the Ukrainians. They're running out of friends. And uh, Zelensky is certainly not worthy of being the Ukrainian president. And the reason I say that is because footage has emerged from more than 10 years ago where Zelensky himself, a young version of Zelensky, actually admitted that he is not worthy to be the president of Ukraine. Ассоциативно не буду приводить примеры, но они сейчас появятся, и они уже были, и известные творческие люди, которые начинают политическую гореть. Шварценеггер. Да. Не с тех товарищей, которые говорят, ну, если вы меня попросите, я пойду в политику, да. Я не считаю, что я достоин э, этой чести. Я не считаю, что я настолько мудр, чтобы занимать такую должность. Да, да, да. Я думаю, что эта страна заслуживает, ну, серьезную кандидатуру. Очень важный момент. Я хочу, чтобы мы все говорили точно на одном языке, а мы на нем сейчас говорим, а именно на одном языке, понимая друг друга.
What a bloody disgrace. The bloke is speaking Russian as well. There he is speaking Russian. What happened to being a Ukrainian and only speaking Ukrainian? But this is before uh, NATO and the Maidan and the, and the CIA brainwashed the country. This is when 98% of Ukraine was normal. There you go, Zelensky himself uh, giving a rare, truthful account of what's going on, that he is not worthy to be the president and that uh, he shouldn't be the president. Lo and behold, what happens next? He becomes the president. Uh, before the brain slug, indeed, we can see the comments uh, and uh, c coming in, the psychiatric uh, drugs in the, bloods of the blood of the shooters. Yeah, sure, that, that's certainly the case. We saw the, the terrorists shaking when they were apprehended, and that probably was out of fear, firstly. Secondly, from the cold, but thirdly, they're probably coming down of whatever strong uh, drugs they were on. And at the end of the day, uh, what's important now is the reactions of people around the world. And thank you to all those who have given condolences and a shame on those people who are laughing and, and cheering on the terrorist attacks. I mean, could you imagine if it was a terrorist attack in the West and there were people in Russia cheering it on, saying, yes, good, let's kill people, let's kill innocent people, women and children and so forth. Could you imagine the reaction? Well, I mean, it wouldn't happen. Uh Russians uh, maintain a level of decorum uh, in their day-to-day -day lives that Westerners just don't really hold on to. So it was just that would never, ever happen. Well, luckily for uh, us in uh, Australia, uh, we haven't had these type of terrorist attacks uh, with that severity. I mean, the closest probably was the Bali bombing and a few other things, maybe the uh, Port Arthur massacre, which some conspiracy theorists will now tell me that. Christchurch was, was New like, Zealand, and there was that. Oh, Christchurch, New Zealand, yeah. I'm sure Lindt Russia Cafe. gave condolences. Lind Cafe. The Lind Cafe, yeah, that was. Uh, well, I mean, you guys aren't like buying that this was ISIS. No, okay, <laughs> Lind Cafe <laughs> wasn't ISIS either. It was just one crackpot um, who, interestingly, was uh, deport. Like he. He ran away from Iran and Iran actually called the Australian government and said, this guy is a criminal, like he's dangerous. And the Australian government was too happy to use him as propaganda against Iran because he was saying that he, he uh, you know, converted to Sunni Islam and that's why Iran is persecuting him and he's here for democracy. So he was useful then. But, you know, when they, they didn't heed their warnings about this guy being crazy. And actually he was apparently uh also like pretending to be a spiritual healer and giving women massages and uh, sexually harassing them so he was batshit insane i saw <laughs> his twitter account just before the attack so like this these things you know these people are found they're useful it is it just so happens that the most major terrorist attacks in uh where isis target it's always the enemies of uh, the Israelis in the United States is not in, uh, at NATO. It's always Syria while Syria is being bombed by the U.S. It's always Iraq while Iraq is being bombed by the U.S. and in, and occupied. You know, it, it, of all the things that ISIS would attack right now, you would think they would be attacking like Israel because they're killing uh, people and bombing, destroying mosques and all of this stuff. So no. has ISIS ever attacked Israel? No, ISIS no. has never. No, attacked Israel. wait, 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 wait. They did once, and then they apologized for it. It was an accident, though. It was a it was wayward missile, so it wasn't it was a direct. Was but they apologized. But it did happen. That's true, and they did apologize, according to the Israelis. Why are, we don't hear from anything from ISIS K-pop for five years? All of a sudden, we have a war with Iraq or with Israel and 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 whatnot, and we've got an attack in Iran, an attack in Russia, and another attack in Iran. All of a sudden, they're all over the place. I'm not buying it. This is crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Like you haven't heard it from ISIS in years. Suddenly you have um, Nolan saying that Russia is going to face surprises and, you know, it looks like they're going to move to asymmetric warfare. And suddenly, you know, suddenly, suddenly Russia is making good relations with the Middle East, like Iran, and they, they bring in uh, all of the members of the Palestinian leadership, including Hamas, for talks. And a month later, ISIS attacks I, isis k-pop like comes out of nowhere <laughs> please Bizarre. make that it's a good one i'm stealing it isis k-pop explain it i don't get it oh it's, I, it's isis k isis k is the one that attacked isis khorsan 
this is what uh, DD is referring to. Yeah, and it's like it's like an ISIS special edition, so I call it ISIS <laughs> special K. Special K. ISIS special K. It's a special edition of ISIS. We're running out of ISISs. So we need, a, yeah, we need a new edition. It's not your regular ISIS. No. It's like ISIS plus. Yeah, so it's like ISIS of the it's weird. Eat. It's like ISIS with curry. So, so it's more believable, right? Because like there's like, more vanilla ISIS, it's like Coke. No, vanilla yeah. ISIS is Ukraine. They're in Europe. ISIS They're, Euro. I'm ISIS of Ukraine. Ukraine. Speaking of vanilla ISIS, they threaten people again today that they're going to start doing terrorist attacks in Europe and America. Oh, oh man. Oh, my God. We'll you know, I heard, and then, I, maybe you guys can confirm this, but I heard that Putin rang Bashar al-Assad like after the terrorist attack. They did. They, 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 yeah. they had they a did? call. Uh, Bashar hey, hang on, hang on. Let, let me confirm. Let me confirm. Hey, Vlad, did you <laughs> ring Bashar? You did? Okay, I'll let him know. Yeah, you're right. It did happen. <laughs> he said his condolences, and then he, they talked about <laughs> partnerships and working working to uh, an anti-terrorism mission as well. And I don't know if you noticed, but right after the, right around the same time as when Putin said that the the, the way that Russia approaches Palestine is going to change um drastically so this kind of all happened at the same time how so he's so they're calling bashar they're saying we're going to clean up us because bashar is probably like told you these isis guys were israel like <laughs> all well, the, and, and the NATO of all did along. say that he was trained in north northern syria he said i was trained there with the turkistan with the weiger terror terrorist so we we know that and he was spending time in turkey before he went over to uh, complete the mission in, in Moscow. So you guys got to know there's two regions where these terrorists are still roosting inside Syria. Uh, one of them is under the protection of the U.S. military east of the Euphrates, and that's ISIS standard. OK, standard edition ISIS is, all, <laughs> is, is, is right there in the northeast, uh, east of the Euphrates. The Americans are occupying east of the Euphrates. So that's the only place that they operate. The Americans uh, are protecting them, basically. Basically, mm -hmm. yeah. Because the Syrian army can't go in there and clean them up. And yeah, they so have, have the Americans them. said that the Croker City Hall was ISIS? They've said that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. They actually said it like 10 minutes after the, the attack happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't know who blew up Nord Stream, though. We don't, we don't know who blew up Nord Stream. And we don't know who, why, how Jeffrey Epstein died. So, but well, we the, the Americans are, knew about it a month prior. They were like, Stay clear of concert halls. So they obviously like were part of the planning team in the room to know that much detail. Um, but uh, it, yeah, but apparently we we you know Nord Stream <laughs> is a mystery, <laughs> as Sarah said. Uh, but the other section is Idlib in the in the northwest of the country. So we're talking about northeast, and then we're talking about northwest. That region is occupied by Turkey. And the whole region, under with the backing of the United States, is under the control of Al Qaeda. Do okay, you remember that old nugget? And that's the other addition of ISIS, right? So, and there's a lot of Uyghur, uh, you know, the Chinese Uyghurs. A lot of them are living there. I've seen videos of them there. Um, so they are uh, occupying Syria illegally. All of these foreigners, um, and they are training maybe there as well. Uh, so. Uh, it, it, even the Americans admit that Al-Qaeda controls Idlib. Even the State Department admits that. And they're okay with that, and they support that. Um, so I think if, if Putin has called Bashar, maybe we'll see that front start to move and we'll start to clean up the whole thing after all, after all these years. I'm going to address this in the comment section. Paul, let's see. Paul, uh, let me know what your name is, right? He. This is the type of person, I want to talk about this, this is the type of person, Paul will tell us that everything is a psy psyop, everything is fake, everything is AI, everything is a distraction, and everything is a movie. Paul, am I right? That's, this is what you think, isn't it? But Paul will tell you that the Moscow terror attack was not real, uh, everything is a, uh, I don't know, a distraction, a movie, and an AI, or something like that. Can I just say, uh, this is the same people who said the special military operation was not real. They said, oh, these videos and footage of combat and war, it's all fake, it's all false, a distraction. Paul, you know I'm talking to you, and you know I'm right. And really, have a look at yourself. And if you agree with Paul, you're an absolute idiot to, to, 
to talk like that i mean it's a it's a it's a terrorist attack uh, have a bit of sympathy and, con and uh, condolences to the people uh, but people like paul this is this is what they say about everything there could be a car accident around uh, around the corner uh, from his house wherever he lives right he'll say it's fake right it, this is the, this is the way they deal with trauma and now people and paul's gone quiet now in the comment section uh, where's paul uh, hashtag where's paul where's paul paul raya right how can people like Paul think everything's fake? Everything's a psyop. Everything's a distraction. Uh, these people really tick me off. What do you think, uh, Syrian girl? It's it's a derangement syndrome, and the ones that are most guilty of it, I see it all the time. Like the Zionists tweeting uh, what about all of the war footage of horrific children being pulled out of the rubble, dismembered in Gaza. They'll say, "Oh, that's just dolls. That's just Pollywood." You know, it, it, these kinds of people are just there to be disinformant agents and to cause confusion and to muddy the waters. Um, and I think that they send them out on purpose into uh, movements where people are already skeptical of what the government is. And then they they, they ride that skepticism and they, they, I don't know if Paul's one of those or one of the people that have been, uh, you know, unfortunately buying into this kind of mythology. But there was a time where I was accused of being an android by some crazy guy uh, online. And it's just, I'm just like not a real person. Uh, so this is the kind of level we're talking about here. Uh, everything is a conspiracy and everything isn't real. So if, okay, you're just watching a movie. So are you being entertained right now by all that's happening in the world? Is this entertaining to you? Is it popcorn out? Sorry, I have to apologize. Paul's actually a top bloke. I uh, just uh, had a look who he is. He's actually a good guy. And he uh, goes to the rallies, and I've seen him, and he flies the red ensign. Uh, he's actually a very nice guy, and he's a patriot, and I, I withdraw my uh, uh, statements about Paul. But I don't get it, Paul. Like on, on, a, on, a, on, a, you know, on a normal bloke-to-bloke uh, uh, -bloke basis, what is it with these people? And Paul's not the only one. There's, a, there's a quite a lot of people out there who say it's a distraction, it's a psyop. No personal uh, attacks on Paul, because I know him to be a good person. He's been a, a strong uh, supporter of many good causes and he goes to a lot of protests and uh, uh, he even supports the uh, uh, pro-Russian protests. I've seen him there. He's a, he's a good man. But really, uh, please stop this. It's not It's not a clever thing to say. It's not a clever, you know, wicket to be on. To, to, to Maybe he means it. that the, um, the ISIS part of it is... Oh, the ISIS, the ISIS uh, that is... What do you think? Does that make more sense? With... We should we should really invite Paul onto the show to clarify what he's saying. Sorry, sorry if I mistook or misinterpreted what he said. Okay, Paul said he never said it was a psyop. Anyway, guys, Paul's a good guy. Everyone, go and like Paul's page and subscribe to him and follow Hello, Paul. Paul. Paul's all right. Shout out to Paul. Um, what do we got else? We've got plenty of uh, more comments flying in the comment section. With only two minutes to go, but with two minutes to go. Uh, Evan Gershkovich, Sarah, you're in the United States. How can we get the message out? Let's do a prisoner exchange. We'll do a... Sitting in a Russian prison. We'll do Where a prisoner reckon? exchange. We'll do a three for one. Just three, all for Evan. We'll do... like I feel like that Russia really wins big in that deal, but I don't think America's going to realize that. So just let... Hang like, on. Sarah, let... Uh, Sarah, you want to go to Russia too, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Time to go. I'm going to stay here, guys, for a little bit. I, I'm i not a You're prisoner. crazy. <laughs> I've done nothing wrong. Maybe you, you and the kangaroos. You just kangaroo got back from now. Moscow, right, Siren? You just got back from <laughs> yes. Russia. Yes. Yeah, I'll be, I'll, I mean, I'm sure I'll go again to Russia, but for the moment. Um, it's time to go. I just feel, I feel I, like they don't like us here, but no. it's our duty to be here. Maybe for you guys, we're too far gone. I can't save this sinking ship. You guys have a small enough population. You can make a difference. We're, I got to go. It's not safe. Sarah's bailing on the on the US. She's going to Moscow. Sarah and girl, you're going to go to Moscow eventually. Uh, <laughs> all roads lead to Moscow. And when you get there, you will have the choice of being... I'll be the Aussie Cossack uh, Moscow correspondent. Oh, you, you, uh, You've got your own uh, very high-profile brand, uh, DD Geopolitics, very prominent. You've got a good team. So the Russians will uh, love to collaborate with you. Russians love foreign journalists. You you saw how many foreign journalists are in Moscow now? Heaps. There were a ton. 
just recently. There are tons, uh, but don't you think it's a testimony to the fact that like democracy is dying in the West, the f- and the fact that we're on the brink of a world war? Running up that time, guys, but the democracy is dying in the West. We'll end it on that note. Work. Thank you to Sarah and Siren Girl for joining us. Thanks to everyone joining us. We've got thousands and thousands watching tonight. Apologies to Paul. Paul's actually a good guy, but please, everything is real. The war is real. And our victory is real because we're going to win. Russia's going to win. And if you're on the same side as Russia, 